Hey, we come to number 16 of our study of the Bible. As you see right now, we're at versions and translations. 2 Samuel 3.10 To translate the kingdom from the house of Saul, and to set up the throne of David over Israel, and over Judah, from Dan even to Bathsheba, north to south. So the original, looking at translated in the Bible, the original was King Saul. It was translated to King David. King Saul was devilish, wicked, vile, and against God. King David was a man after God's own heart, obedient, lover of God, and God loved David. The other place it shows up, Colossians 1.13, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us in the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians 1.14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The original, power of darkness in hell. That's before salvation. <coughs> Excuse me. Translated, the kingdom of his dear son. That's after salvation. Transition, or translated, greater than the original. I think there should be an A instead of an N. Okay. Hebrews 11.5 By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God has translated him from before his translation. He had this testimony that he pleased God. The original, Enoch was on the earth in the world in sin. The translation, Enoch is with God, raptured in heaven, no sin. That's pictures the church. We're living in a world of sin and we're sinning today. One day, once that trump blows, we'll be translated into heaven, no more sin. When someone compares the originals as better than what we have in the translation, it's not a biblical stand to be in. You know, in the originals, the Bible says a, a translation could be better. I mean, let's look back up here. As far as the, uh, second Samuel, the original, you had devilish, wicked, vile, and against God. The original, you had power of darkness and hell before salvation. The original, he's living in the earth and the world of sin. That's the originals. What's the translation? Man after God's own heart, obedient, lover of God, and God loved David. Translation, kingdom of his dear son, after salvation. Translation, Enoch is with God, and he raptured into heaven, no sin. Now, which is better, the original or the translation? The King James 611 AV is, is able to and is able to be the superior than the originals. By the only three places translated in the Bible, 2 Samuel 3.10, we just saw Colossians 1.13 and Hebrews 11.5. Translation is a superior to the originals. Now we look at manuscripts. 5,400 approximately. Presently existing manuscripts has parts of God's word. There are no manuscripts with the whole or all of God's word. Copies. So that's the manuscripts. Manuscripts is manuscript text is rendered all lowercase. You see this writing right here? That's lowercase. Magistil, ma manuscripts, text is rendered in the uppercase, all capitals. Also, unseal. Cursive, script, from, script form does not print longhand. So here are the three forms of, of, the, of the manuscript. They're either lowercase, they're all in uppercase, or script. 
which they don't teach in schools today. We get them from lectionary, hymnal songbooks, sexual reading. Now, if you get your hymn book, some hymn books have, in the back of the book, they actually have scripture. Uh, they may have some, uh, some of the Psalms. They may have uh, readings for Pacific holidays and stuff like that. Even the hymns themselves has got scripture in them. So some of the manuscripts come from the old hymnals. But a hymnal is not the Bible. And the Bible is not the hymnal. Hymnals can have mistakes in them. Like when you get hymns that say, the, the bells in heaven. There's no bells in heaven. When we've been there for 10,000 years, you're not going to be there for 10,000 years. Because there's no period of time. So versions. Different languages. The King James 611 version, authorized version, is a version of the English. Originally in the Greek tongue. Fisito, translation into the Syrian tongue. Antioch. 150 AD matches the King James. The old Latin Vulgate, put it in the simple language of people, translation, 157 A.D. matches the King James Version. Scholars and Bible schools, synonaries, will say that the KJV is not based on the oldest manuscript. That's because the King James was on the correct manuscripts and they got worn, worn out and fell apart. The, the oldest manuscripts, I mean, after so many years, you got to take your personal Bible and you got to get a new one because it wears out. Pages fall apart. My Bible, the one I have now, a terrible uh, Bible publishing company, I don't want to have to get a new one, but <laughs> uh, Lord forbid if I have to, but there's soda, coffee, tears, stains. Blood. Yes, I got my blood in my Bible. It wore out. You know, they speak the originals. They wore out. In Jeremiah, the originals were burnt and thrown in the river Ephrates. What people did not use, what people did not use lasted longer. But the Bible schools used much. So, the longer you used it, the more wear and tear. You get a Bible that's been sitting on the bookshelf and no one's ever opened it, man, that's going to be crispy cream after 40, 50, 60, 70 years. You get somebody like me who reads their Bible every day, studies their Bible every day, two or three or four hours. I think it's going to fall apart. Jerome. Eusebius Serotonus Harumanus. Uh, I guess you can say that. He sent Jerome to the pagans. His life was vanity. He learned Latin and Greek and Gaelic. He moved to Antioch and learned Hebrew. That's East. We're going to start getting to East and West churches here. Antioch is where they were first called Christians. Antioch is where our Bible comes from. You don't want an Egyptian Bible. In the West, that's where you don't want, 382 to 385, he was in Rome again as a secretary to Pope Dumbass. I mean, Dumbasses, one. Judges 17, 10. And Michael said unto him, dwell with me, and be unto me a father and a priest. And I will give thee ten shekels of silver by year, and a suit of apparel and victuals. So the Levite went in. And who says that you can't find a Catholic church in the Old Testament? There it is. Returning to Antioch in 378 or 379, Jerome was ordained there by Bishop Paulinus. And, three, and then this is all about Jerome, 383 AD, revising and translating, requested by the dope, I mean Pope, on this view of religion and not God. So we want a translation, we want a revised, 
Because what the Holy Dope Pope says, not what God says. So the Latin Vulgate, 1482 A.D. You see, we're going all to, we're coming up to the King James. Doctrines of the Catholic Church. I mean, in the church today, we don't, we, we know, well, we do have the doctrine of the Catholic Church, but we have the instruments and the folly and the foolishness of the Catholic Church. I mean, do you believe that Baptist churches have Easter and Christmas and pagan holidays? Anything Catholic, you got to avoid. If it's got the Catholic stamp of approval, get rid of it. Doctrines of the Catholic Church, Latin Vulgate, used by Bible schools as more reliable. So how is this Catholic nonsense into the churches? The scholars say, well, the Catholic Bible, you know, of Jerome and all that, it's great and wonderful. The King James Bible, <laughs> a little leaven, lemons, a whole lump. The Church of Much Marriage in the Book of Revelation, well, that's the nonsense we got. Now we got a lukewarm church. <clears throat> After the Jesuits, that's a poor order of the Catholic Church. Haters of God, haters of Christians, haters of the Word of God. Ordered under the threat of death. Death. The people wanted it now. The Catholic priests rejected the idea of the use of the Hebrew rather than the Septuagint, the LXX. So they won't, don't want the Hebrew Bible in the Hebrew from the Hebrew. They don't want the Hebrew Bible from the Hebrew. But they want the Septuagint, a poor, wrong Bible. Interesting. I mean... I'm going to do it. I mean, they don't want the Hebrew from the Hebrew. So what I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a rock to get some grapes or raisins. Standardized Latin texts. Many of the time were perversions of the old Latin, which came under the Septuagint. The old Latin Bible is actually the old Latin Bible. Artificial term to application of Jerome's work. All work prior to the Vulgate, including corruptions. So the old Latin Bible is not the work of Jerome. He just put another label. It included Apocrypha. Jerome did not want or had the need for the Apocrypha as no authority. The Apocrypha is in Jerome's Bible, but he, he didn't believe it. Why was it in his Bible? Financial pressure of the Pope's people. Now, what is it? The Book of Daniel, Song of the Three Children, the story of Susanna, oh, Susanna, sing a, and the idol, Bell and the dragon. You know what Bell is? That's, that's the Babylonian god. We know who the dragon is. Down south of Florida, they keep launching them into the outer space. Jerome revises early works. He makes his own translation. On Vilium. Uh, I believe that was the animal hide. I think it was. Origins Hex, Hex Apla. We looked at that work before. Six columns. Gospels revived 338 AD Latin translations. It was completed in 405 AD plus or minus. It was approved at the Council of Trent, the official Bible of Europe. Other Bibles were under the penalty of death, and this is the period of the Dark Ages. So we are now in the dark ages under Jerome's Bible that if you have any other word of God, we're going to kill you. It's a Catholic Bible. It is sponsored by the Catholic. By the Catholic. It is ordained by the Pope. It is, hey, put that hypocrisy in there or we're not going to support you. 
Uh, an 801 AD revised by Alcuin, presented to Charlemagne. In 1522 AD, revised Latin Vulgate Greek text, right beside it, and older manuscripts references. In 1528 AD, Robertus Stephanus, critical Latin text, three Vulgate manuscripts. It divides the Bible into chapter and verses. There you go. There's a name. That will show up later on in the Geneva Bible. Where do we get our chapter and verses from? From Robertus Stephanus, 1528 A.D. There were 17 manuscripts in 1538. In 1590, prepared by the Commission on the Orders of Pope Sixtus V, and edited himself. <laughs> the dope pope edited it himself. Now you know you're in trouble. It was the first edition of Lag Vulgate, Vulgate authorized by a pope. Now, Jerome's up here with the pope, uh, what was it? It was requested by the pope. Down here, did I go too far? Down here, we have a a bio, bio, <coughs> authorized edition authorized by the Pope and edited by the Pope. Dum, 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 dum. Its official recognition was short lived. The edition was replaced in 1592 by the Seco Clementine Bulgay. That's not Valentine. That's Clementine. Get it right. Wycliffe Bible, uh-oh, here we go, is the name now given to the group of Bible translators into the Mid Middle East. Middle East. Let me try it again. Wycliffe Bible's name was given to a group of Bible translators into the Middle English that were made under the direction of John Wycliffe. They appeared all over the period from approximately 1382 to 1395. 1582 A.D. The Dumbre, I mean the Dore Reims Bible, Catholic, Catholic. From the writings of the Church Fathers. This is where we get our 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 manuscripts. This is where we get everything compiled together and we threw a little we threw a little Catholicism. But this is all how we got our, our Bible, the writings of the church fathers. From sermons and letters from the first and third century. So the church fathers would get up and preach a message and they write their message down, and we have copies, we have fragments of those sermons. And they, oh, okay, he used that portion of scripture. And then he would write letters to his friends and all that. And well, this is what the Bible says about that problem. That's how about this encourage you? Now, as far as the church follows, some were apostate in doctrine and beliefs. So we're not looking at their doctrines and beliefs, we're looking at what they quoted from the scriptures, what they quoted to be the scriptures. And some were faithful and true to God. Now, the writings of the church father, we say church fathers. Well, gee, I wonder who gave them the name church fathers. When Jesus said, call no man your father. I, I wonder who would give that title of a name to a group of men. I wonder who. And it's about the time of the 200s A.D. There are quotes and letters and passages from the scriptures exact. Though fraud at times, the scriptures were being truly quoted. I mean, we could tell if a scripture was misquoted because it's been quoted before and often. But most of the time, when we look at the letters of, of, of our church fathers, <coughs> excuse me, 
we would see the, the scripture quoted verbatim as properly. Again, we're looking at the manuscripts. We're looking at how did we get the King James Bible in our lap? This is what we're looking at. And we got to throw a little poison in there of the Catholic Church every once in a while. So, like I said, we talked about Jerome. But uh, the versions, they're different languages. So, okay, so we get them from the church fathers writing letters and their sermons. Archaeology. Archaeology finds items with scriptures. These items are put next to the fragments in museums. Clay pots. Inside clay pots were writings, scraps, pieces of paper. Even on the clay pots themselves, people wrote scripture. I mean, there, there, there's there's a famous store lit right by us. You can go buy, you can go in there, you can buy all kinds of pots, cups, things with scripture on them. Wall hangings, samplers. We got a wall hanging up there. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. My daughter made for me Titus two thirteen a wall hanging. It is it, my life verse, and they would find wall hangings. I don't know what you would call. I mean, we have today for cars, we have bumper stickers. I don't know what you would say stickers for camels and asses, but I wonder if they had that kind of thing for the animals. I would assume on a cart or a farm, and then I would assume that there would be scripture written as many Christians don't do today. And that when we drive up to a church and anywhere, and they look at our car full of scripture. Oh, that's weird. You know, their car, I mean, because we got scripture all around our car. And it seems to amaze some Christians. But there would be wall hangings. There would be jewelry. They would find jewelry with scripture. And then they would find inscribings. Find work where the, the, the word of God was inscribed to be. And they would take all that work, and that would be where we compiled and the evidence of the scriptures. I guarantee they would never find a writing from the NIV. They asked me. The New King James. They wouldn't find those, those passages. Now, see, we're going to stop right there, but you can see next week, next time, Lord willing, Alexandria, Vatican, and Sinai. So, I don't want you to see that yet. So, there we go with that. And this is not to be an exhaustive, uh, you know, kind of too much. It's a lot to deal with. It's too bad that many Baptist churches don't sit down and say, okay, we're going to look at why and what the King James Bible is. Now, we rather do Valentine's, Easter, and Christmas rather than the King James Bible. We rather say, it's hey, King James Bible, and not explain why the King James Bible. Adam, just saying for the text. 